Well, this month marks the 50th anniversary of the founding of the Black Panther Party, and we're spending the hour focusing on an overlooked part of its legacy, political prisoners in the United States who are former Black Panthers. Uh, I want to bring into the conversation from Baltimore Eddie Conway, former Baltimore Black Panther leader, who was released from prison in 2014 after serving 44 years for a murder he denies committing. Uh, he was convicted in the killing of Baltimore police officer Donald Sager, but has maintained his innocence, saying that he was set up. For years, Conway's supporters campaigned for him to be pardoned. Uh, welcome to Democracy Now! Thank you. Uh, talk to us uh, about how you got involved uh, in the Panther Party and what uh, the, uh, the incidents that led up to your original arrest. Well, primarily, I got involved in the Panther Party as a result of me deciding not to go to Vietnam and come home from the Army, uh, because there was a tremendous amount of rides taking place in the United States in uh, 65, 66, 67. I wanted to see if I could come and help solve whatever problems it was in terms of the black community rebelling, like it was. Uh, Joined the NAACP, worked with CORE, tried to uh, integrate the uh, workplaces. Uh, during the process of that, I found out that there were serious problems in the community. Uh, young children were going to school without uh, uh, food. Uh, there was no medical care. There was a number of things. The uh, community was under attack by the police departments, et cetera. So I looked around and identified what I thought was the best organization to address that. It was the Black Panther Party. Uh, so I joined the Black Panther Party. We uh, established a, a help uh, uh, institute, a medical clinic, a breakfast program, a educational program, community control, the police, et cetera. And uh, during that period, uh, the FBI, uh, with its COINTELPRO, uh, program uh, decided to destroy the Black Panther Party. And uh, within a year and a half, it uh, destroyed about 25 of our 37 state chapters, uh, ran the uh, leadership out of the country, the primary leadership, or locked them up or assassinated them, uh, and locked up the secondary leadership or even forced them to flee the country. And I was part of that secondary leadership. I ended up getting locked up uh, illegally uh, as a result of a shooting incident between Panthers and police. Uh, police got killed. Uh, one got wounded. Uh, the other ones engaged in a shootout. Uh, a couple of days later, I was uh, put in with two other Panthers that had been locked up in the area. Um, and taken from my job and uh, tried, convicted, found guilty, and spent uh, 12 years in prison before they made a determination that we had all uh, been tried illegally in the state of Maryland, according to the law. But it took another 32 years to uh, actually win our release or win my personal release. And, uh, Eddie Conway, one of the—you mentioned that wave of repression, first of the top leadership, then of the secondary leadership. One of the things I remember was years after that repression ha uh, occurred, uh, the New York Times reported about a secret poll that the federal government had done, uh, and, this, uh, and where the federal government uh, concluded that at least 25 percent of all African Americans in the country were supporting the Black Panther Party. So they were deeply worried that the black community was being increasingly radicalized as a result of your efforts. Well, not only that, but they, their problem was that. Uh, we worked, we formed alliances with uh, groups in other communities, uh, the uh, Native American community, uh, the uh, AIM. We uh, formed alliances with the uh, Latino community, uh, the Brown Berets, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, Puerto Rican community, uh, the Young Lords, the white community, the Patriot Party, uh, White Panther Party, et cetera. We formed alliances throughout the country. But alliances were also being formed, and our programs were being duplicated in uh, India, in Israel, in Africa, in Europe, in the Caribbeans, and so on. 
So it was those ideas that were spreading and that, that unity in terms of creating an alliance that scared the government the most. And uh, so they weren't just concerned about what was happening in the black community, but they was concerned about the ideas of international socialism spreading throughout the uh, radical communities around the world. Taking an example from our the way we were building and organizing, mm. and they had to disrupt that building and organizing, uh, and the only way they could was they labeled us as black militants with with only uh, a self defense component, and they gored us into uh, by killing us, assassinating us, blowing up our buildings and whatnot. Uh, that gored us into resisting, protecting the stuff that we had built, and it and it actually led to uh, a, a, a split, for the for the want of a better term, uh, between those of us that thought that building a broader base among the masses was the the correct way to go, and those of us that was tired of being. Uh, uh, persecuted and uh, attacked and tired of seeing our members assassinated. Mm -hmm.